welcome to our second stop. Uh, this is what's called the Devil's Backbone. We are on the eastern edge of the Devil's Backbone. US 2 is just below me, about 20 feet, 50 feet out. We're still on the west side. We're north more of where I just had you at that Cambrian Carbonate. Now the Devil's Backbone is very interesting here. Um, we're on the east edge of it and it trends in a manner west-northwest. Just coincidentally, that's the general trend of our sandwich fault zone. But it's not a coincidence. Devil's Backbone is a product of the sandwich fault zone. And it extends west here about a mile or so before it becomes covered with glacial deposits. And you look at the beds behind me here. This is all St. Peter sandstone. And you see the beds are kind of dipping Okay, now th th that's a clue as to what's going on here. When we get really close to this rock, which we're going to in a minute here, you're going to see that this is an ordinary St. Peter sandstone. Okay, I'm about 10 feet higher and maybe about 30 feet west of those dipping St. Peter beds. Now, what we see here, you look behind me, at this, and we're going to take a closer look at it. You see these angular blocks of conglomerate. Now, they extend this way, and then they beat uphill. Now, that's really unusual. Now, this isn't so much a conglomerate as it is a breccia. Uh, we have several lines of evidence for this. Number one, the angularity of the blocks, the variable size of the blocks, you know how hard this is. The St. Peter, usually, I touch it, it falls apart. That doesn't happen here. And we're going to take a closer look as to why. Okay, here's a close-up of the breccia. We're actually facing south. Now you look at this, you can see bedding and stuff that you would normally see within the St. Peter. But you look at this, this is hard. This isn't flaking off when I scratch it. And these blocks are very angular. Most are cobbles, but there's some small pebbles and granular size. And we come, we go west a little bit, and we start to see more normal bedding. This is our breccia. It comes up and kind of disappears. Now, not right here, but west about 100 feet or so, the very top, we have Galena Platteville on top of that hill. So we know this is St. Peter, but it just doesn't fit our textbook definition of St. Peter. Now looking east, you can see the structures in it, but you have the typical light colors and the bedding and all that stuff. Right here in this zone, right here, as we look east, this is more of a quartzite and a white quartzite. And in order to turn a sandstone into a quartzite, you need a lot of pressure and a lot of heat. Not as much as most metamorphic rocks, but you need enough. This outcrop right here, which is actually dipping, you can see it, is dipping more south. Now at the last outcrop, the rocks were dipping west. So we have a lot of complex geology going on in here. And we look up and we see the angled beds and stuff like that. What we are probably looking at right here, planar surface of a fault. Now, it's the fault scarp is what it is. And what happened here is to the, to the north of me was most likely our down throne. It's either buried or covered or eroded or whatever. But this prominent ridge along its northern flank all the way down until it itself becomes covered by glacial deposits is the face of a fault. Now, I'm in the process of mapping this right now. Um, I'm gonna have a line of fault, a fault line that essentially comes this way, goes due west, northwest, and this is probably my upthrown side. And the reason for that is just the hard the hard quartzite nature of this is the reason why this, why the Devil's Backbone is here. If this fault did not exist, Devil's Backbone would look as flat as it does to the north. Okay, this is a piece of the quartzite I've broken off. 
Now when you look at this, you can see the sand grains within it. You can see the fine to medium grains of sand, which are typical of the St. Peter, plus they're well-rounded and it's pure quartz. It's very typical of the St. Saint Peter, but it's really exceptionally hard. I can't break it apart by scratching at it and digging in it. Okay, that's looking back east where I had the camera set up before I put it in my hand. That's probably about 50 feet or so. Now we're going to go uphill. This is more typical of the average St. Peter. It's still pretty much quartzite. And up top there, you see the typical weathering patterns of the St. Peter. There it hasn't been metamorphosed at all. So we look at this and now we're south of where our fault is, which points evidence that that actually below us actually is the plane of the fault. Okay, well that concludes our exploration today of the west end of the Sandwich Fault Zone, the longest single trending fault zone in Northern Illinois. And I hope you learned something today.